Hi, today I want to cover something I really haven't talked about in many of my other LED related projects, and that is the LED strips themselves. So hang around. I've done a lot of LED projects around the house, and I've made a number of videos on how to do these projects yourself. But those videos tend to focus on the controller or the firmware or how to integrate those um, into Home Assistant or other automation platforms. And what I really haven't done is focus on the LED strips themselves. So based on some of the questions I've received, today I'm going to talk about how you cut these, solder them, where, when, and how to do power injection, and basically focus on the LED strips themselves, including how you connect them to the controller and the power supply. At the very end, I'll also answer some of the more common questions that I've received. So LED strips come in a lot of different flavors and varieties. There's 5 volt, 12 volt, even 24 volt, digital, analog, RGB, RGBW, clockless, SPI, the list goes on and on. But one of the most common, and the one I use in most of my projects, is the WS2812B. They're relatively inexpensive. They are an RGB strip, 5 volts. And uh, I'm going to show you a number of different techniques, and these techniques should generally be applied to just about any type of LED strip. Every once in a while, there's something that will be slightly different, like with 12 volt, where only every three pixels are the same color. You can't necessarily cut every pixel. But for the most part, what I'm going to show you today can be applied to any type of LED strip. So let's start out by digging into the WS2812B. So these are the WS2812B pixel strips and pretty much what I've used in all of my projects. Now they are five volt clockless, which means they're powered by five volts and they only need one data wire. So you'll have three wires uh, running to the strip, your five volt plus and minus and one data wire. Uh, they generally come in either one meter, uh, which is about 3.3 feet or five meter, about 16.4 feet lengths. But even within the WS2812, there are a lot of variety. For one thing, here you can see that they come either black or white. Uh, they come in different waterproof standards. These are actually IP30, which are meant for indoor use only. But you can get them in IP65 or IP67 that will really come with a silicone sleeve to help protect them from water. More importantly, they come in different numbers of pixels per meter. These top two are 60 pixels per meter, so you'll get 60 individual lights for every meter of length. Down at the bottom, these are 100 pixels per meter. So you might want to use those in a situation where you need really bright light, uh, some maybe like task lighting, but obviously your power draw is going to be a lot higher with these. They also come in 30 pixels per meter, which I don't uh, have any of here, but just look at the 60 and basically it would be every other pixel uh, for the 30 pixels per meter. Okay. The nice thing is that these strips can be cut to any length. It would be very rare that you would need exactly one meter or exactly five meters in length for your project. So the fact that we can cut these to any needed length and then actually join individual strips together is what we're going to cover next. Cutting these strips are extremely easy and all you need is a good pair of scissors. A couple of things to note, however, if you take a look at these strips, especially the longer strips, what you're going to see is you're going to see a solder joint uh, about every half, well, exactly every half meter. So for uh, 60 pixels per meter, every 30 pixels is going to be this solder joint. It would be every 50 pixels on the 100 pixels per meter. You generally want to try to avoid, avoid cutting the strip across these solder joints. Now you can, uh, but really, if at all possible in your project, try to avoid those. If you look, you'll see a white line meaning these can be cut anywhere along those white lines. Now, if you're using 12 volt uh, pixels, uh, they may have uh, every three pixels where you can cut them. But for these WS2812B, which is what we're going to talk about today, these can be cut anywhere. If you are using a uh, waterproof version, the uh, IP65 or IP67, you may need to carefully slice that outer uh, silicone sleeve and peel that back, then reseal it up afterwards. But all you really need to do is try to cut these right in the middle between two pads so we have a little bit of pad left on each piece. I'm just going to cut right through that, and there you go. And you'll see we still have copper pad on this end, and we have copper pad on that end, which is going to allow us to join our connectors. 
One other important thing to note, and this will bite you at some time, it's bit me dozens of times. While your power can flow either direction, your data only flows one direction. And that direction is indicated by these arrows that you see on the LED strip. So our data is going to come in one end of the strip and go out the other. If you don't are careful when you're doing your connectors, you'll either end up with something like this, where you see our data arrows are pointed, get that in focus, data arrows are pointed at each other, that's not going to work, or the data arrows are pointed away from each other, and again, that's not going to work. So we need to make sure whenever we're doing any kind of connections, we keep that data flow in mind from one strip to the next. So once you've cut your strips, you're going to need connectors or a way to get your power and your data signal into the LED strip. Now, the strips generally come uh, prepackaged with a connector at the beginning and the end of the strip. Um, so, but you can see this is, is pretty bulky, and if you're trying to install this where they're really flat, um, you can either peel this back and desolder the wires or simply cut off that first pixel. Um, because I, Again, these are going to come with wires for power injection, uh, which you may or may not need, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. And while you could certainly solder your wiring from your controller and your power supply directly on into your LED strip, I highly recommend the use of these JST connectors. It allows you to easily connect and disconnect your uh, LED strip from your controller and power supply should you need to work on it or move, um, move anything around. Now note that these do also come in uh, female and male versions, and the standard convention is that you use the female on the data inline and the male on the data outline. If you don't uh, create your own standards at some point, uh, like it's happened to me many times, you'll find out you need to connect your strips together and you end up with two male ends trying to connect together, which isn't going to work. Ideal in every situation, if you've got a tight corner or need to join two strips together in a channel, you may or may not want to use these, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. But since this is our data in line, you can tell by the arrows, let's solder one of these female JST connectors into our incoming side of our LED strip. To connect our JST connector to our LED strips, we're going to put just a uh, pre-tin these pads just a little bit with just a, a tiny bit of solder. I like to use a little bit of a no clean flux on this just to make things flow a little bit better. So we'll put a little bit of that on there. And then we're going to gently touch this to the pad itself. You want to be a little careful here because too much heat and you can actually melt the LED strip. So it doesn't take a lot. Okay, there you go. So now that those are pre-tinned, all we've got to do is take our JST connector, and these generally come uh, pre-tinned as well, so we don't have to uh, add any solder to these, but if you are using your own wiring, you will want to uh, pre-tin your end of your slips. The other thing to notice is, if you look very carefully here, if I can get this in focus, you'll notice 5 volt data and ground. So make sure that you've got your wire in the right spot. We're actually going to do this end. So on our data end, our ground is going to be the top data and 5 volt on the bottom. So again, we're going to go white, green, and red. And this is very easy as well. Again, all we do is take our solder pin, our soldering iron, and basically just touch this right to the top and melt that in there. Okay. And then we repeat for the data and our 5 volt, positive 5 volt. So that's it. We now have a connection for our data in. And you'll repeat this uh, again using the male uh, into this on any data out and the female in on any data in. So if you have a situation where you either can't or don't want to use JST connectors, but need to join uh, two segments of an LED strip together, we can do that by just soldering them to each other. Again, make sure you're noting the data line. And if you have the data lined up properly, ground should be opposite of ground, data, and 5 volts. So all we're going to do in this case is we're going to peel back, maybe, a little bit of the backing here to expose some of the adhesive. Not a lot, just enough to kind of hold it in place. Make this as flat as possible. We're going to stick that down 
for our surface. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side, peel a little bit back. And then we want to just very slightly line up and overlap these two pieces and press them down. Okay, once we have those in place, we're going to do the same thing we did with the wire. We're going to add a little bit of flux here. That. And then again, take our soldering iron and we're going to apply, apply solder, heat that up, and kind of drag the solder back across a little bit more there. There we go. Didn't get it across that third one. There we go. So we just let that cool for just a second. We can gently peel this back up, push these back down, and now we have the two strips joined together. So there are alternatives in terms of joining strips as opposed to soldering. You can actually buy strip connectors. Basically, just make sure that you buy or buying the right ones for your particular strip. But the idea here is you just simply insert the two ends of your strip, snap these down, they puncture the strip, and make connections. To be honest, I've not used these. I don't know how well they work. They also come in 90-degree angles for, for joining strips at, at a corner. Uh, I prefer to solder solder my strips together, but these are, are an option if uh, you either don't or uh, don't have soldering equipment or prefer not to. So next, what if you have a situation like this where you need to create a 90 degree angle? Now again, you can use uh, the pre-built connectors. They come in 90, 90 degrees as well. But the one thing about these strips is while they do have some, some flexibility this way, they really don't have the ability to bend in, in this direction. Now I've seen people that have come around and they've wrapped these things around uh, to do things like this. But to be honest, the wiring in here between these pixels is pretty thin uh, and pretty delicate. So you're not going to be able to, to make a sharp 90 degree angle with just the strips themselves. So of course your alternative is to run short pieces of wire uh, between your two strips. And here's an example of a place where I did that. This is my uh, 3D printed LED clock and you can, can see in here there is a uh, a whole bunch of LED to LED connections and I tended to use solid wire here just to keep it in place um, between there but really using this kind of technique between JST connectors soldering strips directly together or using short wiring runs you can create LEDs in just about any shape or size that you need for your project so once you have all of your strips built and soldered and put together in whatever pattern you're using, you're going to need a way to connect your strip both to your 5 volt power supply and your LED controller. Now generally what I like to do is I like to take a male, this should be female because again remember that's your data in, I'll take a male JST connector and then modify it. I will usually use a spade connector or some other kind of clip here for our data that's going to connect the data line coming out of our controller. And then for my 5 volts, positive and negative. I usually just extend the wire to however long that I need to that. And then on the end, I will generally use these Wago clips that I can then connect directly to our 5 volt power supply. If I need to do power injection along the way, again, I can step up to a 3 or even a 5 connector and I can run each of my power injection points back to this. I'm going to talk about power injection in just a couple minutes. So the advantage of, of wiring it up this way is that I can easily, when I'm ready, connect my LED strips to my power and my controller. And if for some reason I need to disconnect these strips, for whatever reason, from my controller, I can simply disconnect it and move it. So that way I never have to remove my permanently installed LEDs if I've got them tucked away or, or mounted somewhere. But I can always disconnect uh, the power and the controller if I need to work on that. That's, to me, it's much more convenient than doing a direct wire uh, to the LED strip, although that is certainly possible. Well, I've covered this in other videos, but I just briefly want to touch on it here, and that's about mounting your LEDs, your LED strips. 
As I mentioned, they do have a peel off uh, adhesive backing on these, so it is possible to just stick them to a surface. But I will tell you that that adhesive is not the strongest in the world. And if you're going to mount these up in a surface, just because of the little bit of heat that these produce, eventually they're probably going to sag and start coming loose, and that's going to be annoying. So my mounting option of choice is I love to use this uh, LED aluminum channel. Uh, you can buy this online. Again, links will be down below. But your LED strips fit nicely into this strip. It also comes with a diffuser that will simply snap on over the top. But again, that, that doesn't really, uh, again, if they're hanging upside down, there's still a possibility of, of this adhesive coming loose over time. So the thing that I like to do is I like to take a little bit of this double-sided 3M tape. It's basically the same width as the LED strip. I will lay that down inside my channel, peel that back, peel the backing off of this, and then stick these together inside of this channel. And I've had extremely good luck with that without those coming loose. You can also get this channel in a 90 degree so that your LEDs will basically be pointing down at a 45 degree angle. So there, there are various options for that, but I do like to mount my strips whenever possible inside this aluminum channel with some double-sided tape, just to assure that they're not gonna come loose over time. So one other thing we need to talk about is voltage drop and power injection. Now what I mean by voltage drop is at the start of your strip, you have five volts coming in. As you go down the strip lighting each pixel, the voltage is gonna get slightly less and less just due to resistance. So eventually what's going to happen is the voltage is going to drop low enough, there won't be enough power to fully light up the pixels. Now for anything, any installs, I'd say about 100 pixels or less, you're probably not going to have to worry about power injection. There'll still be enough voltage at the end to, to light those last pixels. Once you start getting above 100, maybe 150 pixels, you'll start noticing the lights are going to dim and they're going to start fading in terms of their colors towards a red. So let me show you an example. Okay, what I've done here to demonstrate uh, our voltage drop is I've just got a short strip of 32 pixels hooked up here. Uh, and again, the controller and the power supply are off to the side here, but I'm going to go ahead and measure the actual power supply if I can get my arm out of the way here. And you see we're about 4.9 volts uh, after, after a little bit of drop already just from the wiring. But after 32 pixels, 4.9 let's measure the voltage after 32 pixels again this is on full bright white here we go we can see we've already dropped to 4.7 volts and that's after just 32 pixels so let me replace this 32 pixel with 100 pixels and take another look okay so now it's the same scenario except this time i've hooked up 100 pixels which is on full bright white so let's see where we are here technically i'll be measuring after 99 pixels let's see where our voltage is at all right, you can see our voltage has already dropped to three and a half volts from our original 4.9 at the power supply. So it's not going to take much longer before the voltage drop is going to be enough that we're going to start seeing it impact uh, the color and the brightness of the LEDs. Okay, finally, I've hooked up 200 LEDs, and you may not be able to see it in the video, but by the time we're at the end of this strip, these have started to fade to a pinkish color, and they're not nearly as bright. Let's take a look and see what our voltage is at now after 200 LEDs. There we go. You can see we've now dropped to 2 point, about 2.6 volts, and it's definitely impacting the color and the brightness of the LEDs at the end of this strip. So once we're up this far, we definitely need to look at power injection. You can pretty much add power injection anywhere along the strip that you feel like you need it, and the process is much the same as it is with the JST connectors. In this case, I've already added a little solder pre-soldered my uh, ground and my 5 volt. I don't need solder for the data pin because we're not going to be adding data at this point, but it's much the same as a JST connector. Uh, again, I've, I've pre-tinned or added a little bit of solder to the end of the wire. And I... and we repeat for the 5 volt on this side. Again, just enough heat to melt that solder and get those to stick together go and with that we now have the ability to inject power along our strip now, i generally like to put some kind of connectors on the end of this i might use wago clips or spade connectors but something that i can 
again, disconnect uh, the power completely from the strips if I need to do any work or just to make the wiring runs easier. But here's a simple way to add power injection. And again, you can do that anywhere along the strip that it's needed. Let me finish up by answering some of the most common questions I've received around my LED projects. And probably one of the most common questions is, what size power supply do I need? Well, obviously you're going to need voltage that matches your strips. So in the case of WS2812, you're going to need a 5 volt power supply. But the question is, what kind of amps does that power supply need to be able to provide? That's going to be strictly dependent on the number of LED pixels that you've got. As a general rule of thumb, you can estimate that each pixel on full bright white will pull up to 60 milliamps, so 0 0.060 amps. So all you have to do is take the number of pixels that you've got, multiply by 0 0.06 to get an estimated amount of current that you're going to need in your power supply. So let me give you an example. I'm going to use my little phone down here as a calculator. Let's say you've got 132 pixels total in your total installation. We multiply that by 0 0.06 and it gives us 7.92. That's the minimum amount of current that we would need with our power supply. Now you're generally going to want to round up. The controller is going to draw a little bit and you generally never want to drive a power supply at, at its maximum amp rating for an extended period of time. So with 132 pixels, I would recommend a 10 amp, 10 amp 5 volt power supply. Okay, let's try another one. Let's just say we've got 45 pixels times 0 0.06. That's 2.7 amps that would be required. You could probably get away with a 3 amp power supply. I would probably go with 5 amp. I'd round up just a little bit to give me that little bit of extra headroom. So again, the number of amps that you're going to need is dependent upon the number of pixels. Now, as far as the power supply themselves, up to about 10 amps, you might be able to find a little higher. You can probably get away with these, with these little brick power supplies. This one actually happens to be a 5 volt 10 amp. Once you get much higher than about 10 amps, then you're going to have to look more at what I call these transformer uh, style of power supplies. And again, this is 5 volt. I think this one is, is 30 amp, if I remember right. Um, and you can go way up in terms of you know, 60, 70 amp power supplies in, in this style. So again, what you need to do is calculate your number of pixels times 0 0.06, round up to the next highest uh, number that you can find, and that's the size you need to use uh, for your project. Another question I received is, can I just run my LED strips off the five volt pin off of my controller? Well, you just saw we calculated a, about amps needed, and I will tell you that the maximum throughput in terms of amps on the pins of, of these ESP8266 chips is only 500 milliamps. So, you know, if you calculate that out, that's, um, about eight pixels. Um, so if your install is eight pixels or less total, yeah, you probably could power, power it off of this chip, but in most cases, you're not going to do that. And the related question is, well, can I just run the power through through my uh, prototype board or this electro cookie board? Well, these things, I couldn't find an actual standard uh, listed for these, but I would be really hesitant to put anything more than a couple of amps uh, through this through this board just because the you know the traces are, are so thin and even if you say two amps you might be able to to do up to 30 35 pixels tops uh, running through this so really what you want to do is you want to always power your led strips independently of your controller now you can use the same power supply and you must have a common ground so let me show you a quick diagram here so this is pretty much how I wire up every one of my WLED installs. This is the controller down here. And again, I've got a, a separate video on uh, the step-by-step -step process on building your own LED controller. And I'll put a link up, up towards the top of the screen that you can see. But here's our five volt power supply. And you'll notice that I'm feeding five volts to the controller, but then five volts separately to the, the power strip. And then the data signal is coming in here off of our controller. And again, if you need to do power injection, you just simply come off of this same, again, using, I'm used showing Wago clips here, but you can run separate uh, positive and negative off of these same connections and do power injection down your strip. So this is the way I pretty much do all of my installs and it avoids running the current needed for the LED strips through either the controller or through the prototype board.
I also often get asked, will you build me one? Especially when it comes to the LED controllers. And you know, as much as I would like to be able to, I have to decline. For one thing, the purpose of this channel is to, is to teach you so that you can do it yourself. And to be honest, I, I just really don't have the time um, to build and, and ship and keep track of the logistics and, and all that kind of stuff. But if you are interested in a uh, pre-built LED controller, um, up here in the corner of the screen is called a Dig Uno uh, by Quindor over at Quinn LED. I'll leave a link down below for that. And I also even have here myself, I have used that. Uh, I actually use this uh, Dig Uno on my Christmas tree. And this is actually a Dig Quad. This actually has four separate LED output channels. Uh, it's fused, handles a lot of voltage. And again, I'll, I'll leave a link to that. But, you know, if you are interested or you don't want to build your own LED controller, uh, you can buy... Uh, one of these dig boards and really all you have to do is hook up your power supply and hook up your led strips and and you're done and finally a few of you out there have been very kind to ask how you might support my channel i've said this in, in other videos my goal here isn't to make a ton of money and get rich off off of youtube really it's about giving back to the community and getting people excited about uh, home automation and diy electronics so there are a couple of ways if you want to support my channel, neither of which cost you any money. One is to hit that subscribe button. By hitting that subscribe button, you kind of let me know uh, that you want to see more videos like this and you kind of keep me motivated. The other way is to make use of my Amazon affiliate links. I usually post links to the parts that I use, uh, either in the video description or a related blog. And when you order via these Amazon affiliate links, it doesn't cost you a dime, but I make a few pennies here and there that I put towards future projects for future videos that I can share with you. So I'm going to bring the video to a close. I want to wish everyone a very happy holiday season. Uh, I hope to be back probably New Year's weekend with my next video. So thanks for watching, and we hope to see you again soon.